Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in this world. I'm DJ Unification, also known as Double Dragon 912. Almost a ton tied there. And today, 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 I want to do something different, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to do my top 10 most disappointing games of all time. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, most of the time, I have a happy top 10. This top 10, I'm going to go in. These games that I've played, they're not necessarily bad games. Well, at least one of them on this list is very bad. I'll tell you if it's bad or not. Um... They just disappointed me. You know how you be hyped for a game and then you get played and you be like, man, what in the world did I just play? That's what this list like, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, this is my top 10. Leave your top 10 disappointing games or games you don't like down in the comment section for me. I would love to read your comments. I like reading y'all comments. Thank y'all for coming, subscribing. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into this. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number 10 has to be Grand Theft Auto 4. Wow, now ladies and gentlemen, Grand Theft Auto 4 was kind of disappointing. It's not because of the gameplay. Some of the gameplay has something to do with it. Like, you know, I don't know if it was just the PS3 version. I think it more than just the PS3 version. But when you turn the car, I'm like, it's like your car's just barely touched the button. And your car's about, about to get ready to flip off the road. That's how crazy the uh, controls for the car was. I don't know if they ever passed that. But man, that new car controls were crazy. But the real reason... Why I didn't like GTA 4 was Nico Bellic. He was one of the plainest, most bland characters in all the Grand Theft Auto series. Hey, it's Nico. Hey, Roman, how you doing? You know, and then Roman always calls you trying to say, Nico is your cousin. I mean, anyways, just the store was bland and just he was bland. You know what I'm saying? I'll be honest with you guys, the GTA uh, DLC is one of the few times that the DLC was better than the actual store. Grand Theft Auto Battle of the Game Tony, that was pretty, that was good. You play with old dude, at first I wasn't going to play it because, you know, I thought you were going to play with gay dude on there, but you don't. You play with, um, I forgot the dude's name, he worked for the gay dude, and it's, it's a tight store. Then you had the Lost in the Damn, that was a real tight store. Both of the DLCs, to me... They should have been the main store because they were better than the actual main store GTA 4. That's crazy. That's the first time. That one of the first time I've ever seen where the DLC was better than the main store. That's crazy, ain't it? But anyways, I digress. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number 10 for my top 10 most disappointing games of all time has to be GTA 4. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep this countdown rolling. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number nine has to be Final Fantasy XII. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Final Fantasy XII, don't get me wrong, the gameplay for Final Fantasy XII is amazing. I've been accused of, you know, not liking really, uh, action-based RPG, but there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I love Final Fantasy II, a combat system, one of the best combat systems I ever played when it comes to action-based games. Great system. Uh, only thing that what made this game so disappointing was the main character, Vaughn. Let me tell you, all he was like this, I want to be a Sky Pirate. I want to be a Sky Pirate. I want to be a Sky Pirate. He's just so bland and, and boring. He, he the main character, and you didn't give this man the main role. The main story was about, uh, the princess who was hard. She had that skirt on, you know, like women in skirts. But uh, forgive me, y'all. I'm a straight man, you know, let's come out. But anyways, uh, then Baltazar, I forgot, I think that's his name. I can't remember him and the bunny girl. She was hot. And, you know, the store made it evolved around them more so than it did the main character. If you're going to have a main character, make the story, make the main character more of a access you know to the team you know, let him be more i guess i could say memorable and have a deeper storyline and i want to be a sky pirate i want to be a sky pirate i want to be a sky pirate that's all he was doing that's all he wanted to do be a sky pirate <sighs> he's one of the most boringest characters ever and that would make the story bland to me but like i said the system good but the story I ain't talking about nothing that's just my opinion coming in ladies and gentlemen number nine has to be final fantasy 12.
Now, all right, ladies and gentlemen, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number eight has to be Resistance 2. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, this kind of came out of left field on me. Now, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, I love the Resistance series. I beat number one, Resistance 2, Resistance 1, Resistance 3. And uh, if you didn't know, kind of like a spoiler alert coming up, uh, the main character on there was Nathan, I think his name, Nathan Hill. And, you know, on, in that universe, the Chimera came and invaded during World War One or Two, And the aliens came and invaded the uh, whole, you know, not a country, but the whole uh, planet. And Nathan Hill was one of the main stars over there. When he first got there, he got affected by the Chimera, but he was one of the few that had powers. You know, he could... He could be like, uh, he was half human and half chimera, and he was up there, you know, helping out the American forces. And all of a sudden, this no-name guy, I don't know who his name is, he played with him in Resistance 3, come out of nowhere and kill the man. How you just going to kill off your main character like that? It sucked. That's the ending, you know, like I told you, I'll spoil it. That's the ending of Resistance 2. Nathan Hale get killed. The main character get killed in uh, Resistance 3. You play with some no-name dude that done shot him in the head and stuff. That's crazy. And I believe that would have been what destroyed the Resistance franchise. You're going to kill the main character off, and then part three, you went in a whole other direction. Kind of like, uh, spoiler alert on this, how Last of Us 2 did. You know, everybody, you know, want to play with Joel, but you went there and killed him off, and all kind of craziness going on. But you don't do that. You get folks attached to the character, stick to that character. Ugh. I don't get me wrong, Resistance 2 has some good mechanics, good first-person shooter, because y'all know I'm not a first-person shooter fan, but that series, I played all the way through from the beginning to the end, and it was a great series. That's my only gripe is, you're going to kill off Nathan Hale, the main character. That don't make no sense to me. God! These folks in this right, and they always want to have that shock and awe effect. Just stop doing shock and awe and make the game like it's supposed to make. You know what I'm saying? Keep the story simple. If it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Add to it. That was my gripe about Resistance 2, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, I digress. Sorry about that. <laughs> like I said, these are my disappointing games. So I'm finna go in. Don't mind me. <laughs> Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 8 has to be Resistance 2. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just was talking about this in the last uh, number I just did. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 7 has to be The Last of Us 2. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, number 7... I might catch a lot of flack for this, but I didn't even buy this game or play this game. Now, when Last of Us 2 was coming out, I heard a lot of rumors about they was going, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. If you haven't played Last of Us 2, there's going to be a lot of spoiler in this. I, I warned y'all on the last uh, uh, number I just did, Resistant 2. But on Last of Us 2, ladies and gentlemen, they killed off the main character, Joel. How in the world? Neil Druckmann, that's why I told y'all that joke need to retire. You do some too big shock and all. You got uh, Joel in the story here, your main character. How you gonna just kill the man off and let Ellie be, be the main character? I, that pissed me off right there. Don't even get me wrong about all the, the get me started about all the craziness that's going on in the last of us two. <sighs> I ain't even play it. I wasn't gonna waste my money on that game. Because I, when I heard Ellie, like, alright, I ain't buying it. And not only that, just the, the story was bland, you know. I ain't, like I said, I haven't played it, but I've seen enough and heard enough of this story where I know what's going to happen. And I'm not finna spend my money on that game. Y'all can have it. Now, I heard The Last of Us 2 has some great gameplay. They said it's one of the greatest gameplay games of all time. That's why it sold to me. It was because of the gameplay. It wasn't because of the story. Cause I know I ain't the only one that's pissed off by The Last of Us 2 story. Telling you, it's the gameplay. I get all the naughty dog credit on that. They know how to do some good gameplay on these games, make people, people keep coming back. But yeah, when I heard about that, I said, no, you ain't getting my money. Uh uh. That game has been on sale plenty of times. It's been on sale for $20. I think I saw it some places. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I, I'll be honest. I think I might have saw it some places for $10. I said, no, I ain't buying that game. I'm good. <laughs> I would refuse to buy that game. I ain't no telling where they gonna go with Last of Us Three. There's so many opportunities in Last of Us Two they could explore. They could explore how Ellie, you know, how she's immune, and you know they could explore the whole world. How, you know, just all kind of stuff they could explore. But they went there and did this route, the revenge story route. But yeah, man, don't get me started on Last of Us Two. I, I be uh, here all day going off on that game. But I know a lot of y'all, ten million of y'all at least, love Last of Us Two. No offense. 
This is my top 10. Like I said, leave your top 10 down in the conversation of your most disappointing games. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, without that being said, coming in at number 7 has to be The Last of Us 2. Moving right along. Moving right along. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number six has to be Max Payne 3. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Max Payne 3, to me, at first, when I first got I thought, all right, this Max Payne 3 is going to be a you know, direct sequel to Max Payne 2. They're going to show us what happened to Mona, you know, all this kind of stuff that's going on. They're going to show us what happened to Mona. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. If you didn't know Max Payne 2, uh... There was two endings you could have got. You can get the ending where you save Mona and, you know, y'all get out of there together. Or the ending where Mona dies. I guess they went with the ending where Mona dies because I ain't seen Mona nowhere in sight. And the story to this, to me, was kind of bland. Uh, y'all know the first two Max Payne, he always had that dark story. You know, his whole family got killed by, I think, some type of mobsters or whatever. And it just, you know, had that depressing aspect to it. But at the same time, you want to play as Max Payne. You want to get revenge on what, what happened to your family. This time, he's over there in, I think, some sunny place. And it, for one, the, the setting was too sunny. And to me, he looked like a, a ripoff, straight ripoff of Breaking Bad. I don't know what happened first. You know, Walter... From Breaking Bad. Y'all know who I'm talking about. I don't know who did it first, but man, he looked like a straight rip off of Breaking Bad. And when I played the game, my my grab about this game, not only the store was bland and you know too, too lighthearted for uh, Max Payne. Um uh, the 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 combat. I remember shooting the guy in the head. I don't know if it's just, just the PS3 version. I had to shoot the guy in the head about five or six times just to kill him. Most time you do a head shot. They did. One to the head. Now, you know he did. Shout out to my little Wayne fans out there. And I remember I kept shooting that dude about five or six times. Like, man, why you ain't dying? I don't know if it was the PS3 target system or just that's just how Max Payne 3 is. Because I had it on PS3. Because it came out on PS3, 360, and PC. And, man, that game just pissed me off with the target system. And, you know, the story was bland, in my opinion. But yeah, that's just my opinion. Like I said, leave your comments down there in the, you know, your top 10 disappointing games down there in the comment section for me. I love to read them. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number six has to be Max Payne 3. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we halfway there. Uh, before I keep going, ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you guys and girls know if you don't see gameplay footage on the game, I either, I probably don't trade it in. I know I traded in Max Payne 3, and I, I got Resistance 2, but right now I don't have a, a method of a cord my ps3 right now i'm trying to get a caps card and it ain't came through yet so uh the certain it's a certain caps card i got to use to record on the ps3 because y'all know ps3 was like a diva you couldn't record straight hdmi on it you had to do an hdmi adapter but i don't want to do all that i just downgrade the signal to 1080 1080i so i could just record it with this caps card i'm about to get but that's neither here nor there so i just like, want to let y'all know about that but coming in ladies and gentlemen number five has to be ninja guy in the arcade game Wow, now ladies and gentlemen, this game back in the day when I was in the arcade, uh, Latin Castle, shout out to the people around from, from where I'm from, they know what I'm talking about, um, they had a game called Ninja Gaiden, and I used to play the dog crap out of that game, I remember our dad, shout out to Daddy Mac again, he used to give us quarters in the arcade, tokens back then, and I think I spent just about half my tokens trying to beat Ninja Gaiden in the arcade, and I never had a chance to beat it in the arcade, but I remember... I did end up beating it uh, recently, not too long ago. I had help, of course, but um, I probably could have beat this one by myself, but I did beat it with help. I ain't going to uh, just take all the credit. Um, when I played through the game, you know, I'm thinking the story going to at least be kind of decent. You know, when you first get there, like the ninja going to the Japan, and then when you beat the game, it say, all right, return back to Japan. I'm like, really? You couldn't give us no better ending than that? And, you know, I hate to say this because I'm, I'm not a fan of people that say they're not built up to today's standards. When I went back and played that game, uh, Ninja Gaiden Arcade, it just wasn't as fun as I remembered it. Like, when I played it when I was younger, it seemed like it was funner. And now I played it when I got older. Just, to me, it wasn't as fun as I remember it. I, you know I love beat-em-ups, y'all. I'm a, that's my favorite genre out right there. I love me some beat-em-ups. One of my favorite genres is beat-em-ups and fighting games. And uh, I love me some beat em up, but this beat em up here, ladies and gentlemen, it just, it just wasn't fun as I remember. It just disappointed me. When I finally got a chance to beat it, I was like, wow, that's it? That's all y'all gonna, gonna give us? Going back to Japan? 
To each his own, though. But yeah, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number five has to be Ninja Gaiden, the arcade game. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we moving along. Coming in ladies and gentlemen, number four has to be DJ Boy. Wow, now ladies and gentlemen, being a DJ, y'all know how to play this. I used to play this game back in the day in the arcade. And a lot of people, I don't know if there's a lot of people, some people don't know the arcade version of this game was two-player co-op. I remember playing it back in the day in the arcade. And then they eventually made it on Sega Genesis. I played the Sega Genesis version once or twice and it was okay, but I love the arcade version. So recently I got a chance... Shout out to my homie Ben. I got a chance to play DJ Boy on the arcade, you know, on the main system. And I was playing DJ Boy. I'm like, man, you know, got to be, hey, DJ Boy, what you think you're doing? You know, I like him. He a trip. He up on the game, but, you know, he never in the game. That's crazy. The same dude that advertised the game, little back character, he ain't even in the game. He ain't put him in the game. But he advertised the game to get you to play it. Now, it has good beats to it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, DJ Boy, do your thing. You know, DJ. Now, I played that game, man, played it all the way through. I realized, I hate to say this, but I realized, like, on this game, this game was not as good as I remembered it. The hit detection is off. Played it. Because I didn't get that far back in the day when I played it. I think I played it for a little bit and then went on about my business. But DJ Boy was very disappointing. And uh, the ending was disappointing. And I did a video on this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have an iCard going across there so y'all can watch the, uh, a DJ plays DJ Boy. I had to play, you know, being a DJ and all. But man, it's one of those disappointing beat em ups. You know, back then in the nineties, we had a lot of beat em ups out here. But uh that that beat em up was disappointing. And I can't believe it. Apparently it did real good and they made a sequel to it called something. I forgot the name of the sequel to it. But I have try to have it going up across the screen so y'all can see what I'm talking about. I saw that on uh somebody's video. Shout out to them. But ladies and gentlemen, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number four has to be DJ Boy. Jump on it, okay. Get up, get up, get up. Uh, A lot of people riding, just try to, try to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're down to the top three. Ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number three has to be Final Fantasy 15. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Final Fantasy 15, I heard a lot of talk about this. I should have known some were going to be wrong uh, before I bought this game because I remember. The director of the game, the guy that was making Final Fantasy 15, said, I want to make a game where I can make gamers cry. I said, what? What the, huh? What'd you just say? I said, knew something was wrong, but I was like, nah, let's give it a shot. So Final Fantasy 15 got, came around. I really just bought this game just to, you know, uh, do a video. I had a video back then, Final Fantasy 15 versus Persona 5. I did a whole video on it. That's back on my old sidekicks, 9, 12, 10. That's why I bought the game. And I ended up going through the game, beating the game. That game was the most disappointing game. It ain't, it ain't even my most disappointing game, but it's very disappointing. That was not Final Fantasy. They said, we, we're making Final Fantasy 15 for uh, newcomers of the game and 
uh, regular players are like, no, nah, that game was made for newcomers. They ain't even a, a, a Final Fantasy system. That game was like Metal Gear Solid meets Devil May Cry. That's how that game was. It wasn't really no RPG elements in it. And I, man, that's one of the games you had, you know, you had to struggle just to get through it. Man, I had to struggle to get through that game. That story was very depressing. It made no sense. <sighs> Let me elaborate on the story real quick. Uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. What I'm about to say is some, some spoilers. The main character of the game, not this stupid A, eh? um, he go through all this. His, his wife-to-be, she dies. And he go and go train off somewhere, off world, and about, when he go training, time done passed, like 30, so 10, 20 years done passed in the real world, and he come back, and the world pretty much been taken over. He did all that training, and the world just basically gone to crap. And him and his boy, uh, Vladio, and all them come together, and they beat the game, and when they beat the game, this joker still died. What type of ending is that? Oh, that game was just depressing. Don't even get me wrong now. Now, Final Fantasy 15 was like a commercial fade for Square Enix. They, they said that game really didn't make them money. Persona 5 made more. Now, they made more money than Final Fantasy. You know, it, Final Fantasy is going to sell just because of the name alone. But that's when Persona 5 really was starting getting hyped. When a lot of uh, action-based RPG fans, they was playing turn-based turn with Persona 5. Because they took turn-based and made it better. If it wasn't broke, they didn't try to fix it. They added to it. Love that about Persona 5. Anyway, we ain't talking about Persona 5. We're talking about Final Fantasy 15. One of these most disappointing games of all time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know I'm a collector. Us collectors, shout out to all my video game collectors. And just collectors of anything out there. We most time don't give stuff away. I gave Final Fantasy 15 away so quick. I gave it to a uh, little boy. Um, the, the lady I met at uh, the radio station, her son, I gave it away. I didn't want it. It was trash. Boy, that, that was one horrible game. No, I didn't give it to the son. I gave it to somebody, a random person I saw at uh, where I used to work at. That's who I gave it away to. I, now I remember. My bad. Memory was kind of messing with me. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I talked too much about this already. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number three has to be Final Fantasy XV. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we down to the last two. Thank you guys, girls, for sticking with me so long. I appreciate y'all. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number two has to be Final Fight Super Nintendo version. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this game was touted as one of the best beat em ups of all time. I remember playing in the arcade, and I remember, I remember when they said, Yeah, it's coming to Super Nintendo, man. You talking about somebody that was hype? All right, all right. We finna play Final Fight on Super Nintendo. Y'all know I'm a huge beat em up fan. Y'all already know that. You watch my channel, you know I am. And I was like, man, we finna play this on Super Nintendo. Uh, Dad rented it. And then me and my brother tried to sit down and play it. We're like, why can't I press start? What, what's going on? Why can't why can't you join? And I'm like, oh, what's going on? Where's guy? Guy know where to be found. Like, is he missing? Something wrong? Can you unlock it with a code or something? We looking up everything. Trying to find out what's going on, and then eventually I heard that uh, the Super Nintendo version took away two player co op and they took a play, took away guy. I was like, What are you serious? Wow, really, Capcom? Now, I to this day do not know why Capcom did that to the Super Nintendo version. Now, you'll hear some Super Nintendo so called fanboys, enthusiasts. They'll say, well, they did it because they didn't know how to work on the Super Nintendo architecture. Uh, they didn't have the power to do it. I said, well, apparently they did because when Final Fight 2 came out, they made uh, Final Fight 2. They made Super Double Dragon. They made all kinds of two-player co-op games. What was the excuse with that? I still to this day don't know why Capcom did that. They had, I know they could have did better. And... Um, I'm thinking also, you know, I was you know, renting games still, renting our Final Fight guy. I'm like, all right, now they're going to have all three of them on there. Nope. Took Cody out and replaced him with Guy. And that was exclusive rental with Blockbuster, I think. Oh, my God. I don't know what Capcom was thinking on that. But, like I said, because Capcom messed up on that, shout out to Capcom. They messed up with that, but that the first Final Fight. They made up for it with two and three. Well, they messed up on that. Sega had a chance to get their thing in there. Now, Sega wanted to make them a competition 
I get Super Nintendo because competition is a good thing. I'm trying to tell y'all. When you have competition, you know, these companies can't just make anything because they know folks can go to, go along and go to the go to another system. So to compete with Super Nintendo's Final Fight, Sega made their own game, Streets of Rage. Awesome series. Love it. Glad they made it four. One of the best beat 'em up series of all time is Streets of Rage. If you don't know about Streets of Rage, get to know, ladies and gentlemen. You can get Streets of Rage on all type of systems. Anyway, we didn't talk about Streets of Rage. We talk about Final Fight SNES version. That's why I always say the SNES version was straight trash. Don't get me wrong, the arcade Final Fight, awesome. Loved it. I'm playing through it many a times. But the Super NES version of it, nope. That's one horrible game, I tell you. They shouldn't have did that. We're going to take away the co-op aspect to it. Hey, that's just me. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number two has to be Final Fight, SNES version. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we're down to the number one, numero uno. Shout out to one of uh, my, uh, I hope that's a subscriber that said my numero uno. He, he quoted me, that was tight. Appreciate you, boss man. Uh, all about, yeah, anyways, I ain't thinking that. But uh, my number one most disappointing game of all time is Final Fantasy Remake. Wow. Now, shout out to Bro Man 2.0. He wanted to know why I really don't like uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And now I'm really going to explain. I explained this before, but I'm really going to explain why I don't like Final Fantasy VII Remake. For one, I've been following that story since the announcement at E3 where they said it was going to come back out and show the trailer for it. And it was going to be on PS4. And this one of the most influential games of all time. But one for Final Fantasy Seven, I would have never known what an RPG was. Told y'all when I that was my first uh RPG I've ever played and the reason why I played it cause the guy Cloud, he has spiky hair, I thought he was Goku and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get into this. And I had heard about Final Fantasy even before that. I that just heard about Final Fantasy, kept seeing commercials on it, kept seeing commercials on it. I played it, loved it, got me into RPGs. And when I found out about the remake, all right, they finna make a remake. Cool, cool, cool. They gonna, you know, they gonna keep a turn base. Nope. Uh uh. They took away the turn base. I'm like, all right, I can deal with that. I'm still gonna get this game a chance. It's like I told y'all, I don't mind action based games. Love Final Fantasy XII. Love that system. That's action based. I'm like, all right, they take away turn base. I can deal with that. Okay, that's fine. Then they said they was gonna make it episodic. I was like, oh, are you serious, uh, Square Enix? Seriously? Really? I was like, y'all just y'all just gonna milk the milk milk the H E double hockey sticks out of this uh franchise. That's what y'all gonna do. You gonna milk it, just do Square Enix tactics. I was like, all right. I said, no, nah, you ain't finna get my money. And then, you know, I like I told y'all, I follow this this game. I've been following it since it incepts. I've been following it for a long time because I'm a Final Fantasy VII fan. And they said, like, all right, for you turn-based fan, we're going to make it turn-based. I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to give it a shot. They brought out a demo. Probably seeing that in the background. If I can pull up the footage, I still got that footage of me playing that demo. I don't know. Hopefully, I held on to it. You should be playing in the background. If not, I have some other type of footage up there. So, I played the demo. I'm like, all right, let's do this turn-based mode. I went down to the turn-based option. I'm playing this supposed to be in turn-based mode where you can do it. Now, what I did when I pressed the turn base, they literally, the cloud started moving by itself, playing by itself. It just took control out of my hand and let the computer start playing. And I looked at the screen, I said, wow, really, Square Enix? What y'all saying that us turn base fans are so stupid that, you know, we don't deserve a turn base mode. We're going to make something stupid for y'all where the game plays for itself. I was like, wow, Square Enix. Y'all, are y'all serious? Are y'all serious right now? Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? 
Shoot, when I heard this, saw that, I said, all right, you ain't getting my money. Nope. Make it so bad, ladies and gentlemen. They brought the first Final Fantasy VII remake onto PlayStation Plus. You know, I downloaded it because, you know, it's free. <laughs> downloaded it. Shout out to my homie David. He wanted me to play it. He, he wanted me to play it so bad he went through our Persona 5 and beat it. Okay, he got the platinum. And thanks to him getting the platinum, I had to go back and get the platinum. I only missed like two or three things from me getting the platinum. I had forgot about them. You know, I had to go fist or something. Anyway, this ain't about Persona 5. So I said, all right, David. You know, you play Persona 5, I'll, I'll play some of Final Fantasy 7. I never did say I was going to beat it. They think that I said I was going to beat it. No. I said, I'll play some some Final Fantasy 7 Rebate. Played it again, you know, after the demo and still like, man, this junk trash. I can't do it. <laughs> I played the first part, the first mission. I said, I can't do it. That was it for me. And to this day, I will not buy Final Fantasy VII. I know they got that re-garbage out there now. You know, I know a lot of y'all like that. But I heard that that game really didn't sell too good in Japan. Sales weren't as good as it was with Final Fantasy re-garbage. Um... The first remake, the re garbage, I call it. Then you got rebirth, re garbage. Also, I won't play that game. I won't touch that game. Y'all can have it. I don't care what they try to say, tell me. They lied to me, first of all, in the, in a news article. I wish I could find a news article. It used to be on my old channel. I can't find a news article no more. Of course, they want to bear. <clears throat> they want to bear that news article. They was like, yeah, turn base is back. Blah 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 blah. Y'all can play turn base. No, that ain't turn base. I know what turn base is. Now I ain't, I may not know much about JRPGs or just RPGs in general, like a lot of you guys, girls out there. You know, I haven't played that many of them. You know, as most people have. But I know what turn base is. Persona Five, that's die hard. That turn base to the to the max, and they took turn base and took it to another level. They made it fast for you guys that you know can't be patient and wait on stuff. You know, I think turn base is stupid. You know, I hit you, wait a little bit, I hit you too. I said, well, I think action base is stupid. All you gotta do is keep pressing and tapping buttons like like you like a button mashing on a fighting game, and there you go. That's action base. Pop, 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 pop. Action base can be stupid too. So you get off turn base. Anyways, uh, I don't got got all upset on this game, but yeah, Final Fantasy VII remake is the most disappointing game of all time. Cause for one, Square Enix lied, and two, they just milking the heck out of y'all. How much um, Final Fantasy re garbage is now? It started off with what, with fifty or sixty for Sony started making it seven. Now it's seventy dollars. So so far you done had to pay seventy plus sixty. Y'all do the math. They ain't gonna count the DLC. I'm telling them how much DLC you got to pay for. They milking the, they milking the crap out of that franchise. They won't get me, buddy. <laughs> they get y'all. They ain't gonna get me. Uh, -uh. that ain't Final Fantasy. I don't know what that is. And then somebody tries to say, well, it's a hybrid turn-based game. No, it ain't hybrid. That ain't turn-based. That's trash. Y'all can have that. Then I saw somebody playing it. They, they, they summon. The summon come out there and fight with you, and they barely come out there maybe once or twice. Don't even summon like you used to on the old. Don't get me started. I'm already getting, getting heated just talking about it. But, yeah, Bro Man 2.0, that's the reason why I don't like Final Fantasy VII Remake. I just told you. Just in case you wanted to know, ladies and gentlemen. But that about wraps it up, ladies and gentlemen, for my top 10 most disappointing games of all time. Leave comments below, ladies and gentlemen, your top 10 most disappointing games of all time. I know I ain't the only one. There's got to be some games out there that just, you know, you was hype about, and then when you played them, it just disappointed you. I know I ain't the only one. So, y'all leave y'all comments down there below. So, I want to know. I want to know everybody else's disappointing games. You know, most time I make a happy top 10, but this time, I'm just going in. I'm being real. <laughs> Come in. Well, I'm done. I'm tripping. I'm trying to keep going. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you guys and girls so much for watching. Stay tuned for more great videos on the way. Double Dragon 912 signing out. Peace out. Now what's Soldier Boy's deal? Is he one of us now? He's got balls, this, uh, uh, what was his name again? Cloud. Cloud Strife. Right. And he isn't a soldier anymore. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad to have him. <laughs> This is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, they won't even let us change the name like this. Right? Real joy to look at, too. Well, here we go. Jesse. Looks are what people notice first. I guess I'm I hear you, Miss Jesse. people. I'd say you're not even reading the same book. Enough. We're done here. Or even the same. Give it a rest.
You'll keep us safe, right, Cloud? Wow, they've almost got the door. We're doing this. We're really doing it. Man, I think I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> Not so fast. We've got company. I thought he gonna do it on his own. He look, he ain't fresh enough. I see that water. They literally dumb down. Dumb down is a hack for the turn mode. Wow. Oh, that's a good one. 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 Oh,